Hi, I'm Zenith. You've seen me find furries with my furry detector, and you've seen me categorize furries with my furry graph, but now, you're gonna see me do something unthinkable. I'm going to create a furry with AI. In this video, I'm making a Twitter bot that writes tweets just like a furry. But only if you like and subscribe, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed, and I would actually appreciate all of you subscribe right now. What kind of introduction was that? One very popular approach is to use something called a Markov chain to predict words. And while I would use that, it's one of the many concepts that caused me to fail linear algebra, and I just don't ever want to hear that term again. No, so the AI model I'm using is something called a transformer model. And if you've ever seen Deep Bluffin on Twitter, it's a bot that imitates an interesting Smash Melee player. And that's the exact same model that I will use. Here's how it works. At a very high level, what it does is it looks at previously generated text and then uses that context to generate new text. With the capability to be incredibly large, transformer models can be infinitely more coherent than any other method. Now, how does it do it in detail? <laughs> I don't know. Something, something, attention is all you need? Yeah, they're incredibly complex and like way too advanced for me to explain in a shitpost like this. And honestly, I don't know. So I'll just throw a bunch of links in the description like I normally do if you're interested. What's more important than the model is actually collecting good data. You see, an AI is only as good as the information you feed it. And this is especially true when you're making a text generator. For instance, Literally, the last thing you want to do is make a misinformation bot. So what I did was collect tweets from all people in my furry graph project and all the people that they follow. And this seemed like a good balance between representing the furry fandom and also just getting a shitload of data. All I did was write a quick Twitter scraper and in almost no time, I had almost half a million tweets to train on. All I had to do was plug it into the AI and see the results. Yeah, no, we're not doing this again. Hi, I'm Zenith. How are you today? A short while ago, I thought I would be alright with this. The thought of putting away all my art stuff was never far away. It just wasn't part of my routine. But now, everything feels so out of date and I don't know where to set my priorities. I don't know what to do anymore. My mind is all over the place. That's really deep. Uh, are you alright? Oh god, I'm so done with everything. What the fuck? So what's your name or nickname? Um, Zenith? You all are shitheads. You need to die. After training on this original dataset of furry tweets, it seems like some unintended habits formed in the AI. For one, I think you can tell that it is incredibly aggressive and even toxic. And more so, it is incredibly scattered with its emotions and doesn't seem to keep a consistent attitude. What this implies, unfortunately, is that these behaviors were somewhat prevalent on furry Twitter to the point where the AI learned it. Those sentiments shown in the previous skit were learned. There's no other way it could have generated that text. The AI imitates what it has learned, and unfortunately, what it's learned is incredibly unhealthy. So I just wanted to acknowledge this before I moved on to fixing the AI, because it feels almost unethical to not mention what just happened on my first go. So it actually took me a while to come up with the solution that removed the toxicity shown. After lots of deliberation and asking multiple smart friends of mine, I eventually came up with a solution. My dataset will only contain relatively popular tweets. It's typically true that popular tweets tend to be more positive or be negative in a good way. What I mean is that for a tweet to gain traction, it needs to resonate with those who like it and a lot of people at the same time. Some examples are like wholesome posts or like fursuit Friday posts or even a post that addresses a serious issue in the fandom. I think this method of tweet collection strikes a good balance of tweets as well as capture the essence of the fandom. And now to dump you with a bunch of random discrete math, here's how I determine if a tweet is added to the dataset. Cool, who cares? All you need to know is that it gets popular tweets relative to the account size I collect from. Now with this improved data collection method, I got 100k tweets after running it overnight and then trained my AI on this new dataset. No, 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 we are not doing this again. No code montages. So, after all of that, I now have a usable AI that can write tweets. It can write bangers like, Hello Twitter, I am still alive. I was playing D&D &D and got turned into a beast man while playing. Or, 
How come life jackets are so cool? You know who did this. Hi chat. Anyways, now that I have an AI that can generate tweets, let's give it a home. I gave it the Twitter handle at DeepFurGPT, filled out its bio with relevant information, and all I needed was a profile picture. It needed to be something so generic that when you see it, you just think, well, that's just a furry, isn't it? Okay, but not this one. I commissioned this fella. And then I turned him into an eldritch horror. Anyways, link is in the description for you to view the bot, and you can see more of the banger replies there. Feel free to check out my Twitter, where I keep you updated on my shenanigans. I just wanted to keep this video pretty short and sweet, because I think the AI speaks for itself. <laughs> okay, I'll see myself out now. Bye-bye.